Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me for today's edition of Arkansas Alive. This is the day the Lord hath made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. All week long, I've been sharing with you the present day ministry assignment of every believer. Not just the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, the four, five ministry gifts in Ephesians, but every believer has an assignment, a ministry assignment from God. Stay tuned. You can find out what your assignment is. Arkansas Alive starts right now. <laughs> if you remember how we started uh, the first day of the week, if you missed those programs, you can go online, vtntv.com, and pull them up by date, and you can watch them and see what you missed. But my purpose was to, I guess, call attention to the fact that every believer has a ministry, every believer has an assignment. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21, we found out that we have the ministry of reconciliation, to reconcile people to God, to restore them in favor with God. And we have an assignment to do the works of Jesus, do the works of the ministry, do the work of Jesus. What was the works that he was talking about? Doing the works of Jesus is laying hands on the sick, um, anointing them with oil, uh, casting out devils, doing the works of Jesus. In, in Acts chapter 1, we found out that we are to be a witness unto him, not just a witness for him, but doing the works of Jesus, your ministry. Uh, this is a witness unto Jesus, unto Jesus. In other words, Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do because I go to the Father. And you can do these works in my name. Yeah, I give you the power and the authority to do that. You can lay hands on the sick. You can cast out the devils. Uh, you can minister to people like I did. And, you know, very few Christians have been taught that. Uh, they just think that somebody else has to do it. But you can do it. You can lay hands on the sick. You can minister uh, to the needs of people. I remember years ago, I was attending um, a ministerial, uh, not a ministerial, but a believer's convention in uh, Fort Worth. And I noticed uh, as I left the back of the auditorium, the, the driver was taking me to my hotel. And I saw this crowd of people. <laughs> I, it, it caught my eye. This was right outside the convention center. And I saw this crowd of people, and you could see that there was a guy laying on the sidewalk. And all these people had uh, formed a kind of a little circle around him. And uh, so I told my driver, I said, well, uh, stop just a minute. Let me get out just a minute here. Uh, I said, I want to see what's going on here. So I went over there. And there, there was this guy laying on the ground, and he was almost shielding himself from these, these Christians that had been, you know, really energized by the ministry of the Word and so forth. And this guy uh, just happened to be sitting there on a, a brick wall as they came out of the auditorium, and they just absolutely pounced on him, jumped on him. Man, he was... He was fighting them off and they were praying for him, laying hands on him. And you could hear him hollering, come out of him in the name of Jesus and all this. And I thought, wow, what's going on? So I, I just kind of very gently said, hey, what's, what's happening here? I said, back up. Give the guy a chance to breathe. What's wrong? What, what are y'all doing? And they started telling me all kinds of things they were doing, praying for him, laying hands on him, casting out devils, whatever. They thought they were doing the works of Jesus. And in their minds, they had just been, you know, charged. and They were ministering to some poor souls sitting on the brick wall outside the convention center. And so I knelt down beside him and I said, sir, are you all right? And he looked up at me. I said, what happened here? He said, man, he said, I don't know. 
He said, I was just sitting here minding my own business, and all these people came out and just jumped on me. <laughs> he was drunk. That was all that was wrong with him. <laughs> he was just sitting in the wrong place at the wrong time. When all of these anointed believers came out of the auditorium, they're getting ready to cast the devil out of him and lay hands on him. Now, I, I'm sure he could have used a little of that, but that wasn't the point. The point was he was just sitting there. He was drunk and he, was, he didn't know what hit him. Well, you need to make sure <laughs> that if you're going to do the works of Jesus, that you would ask Jesus, ask the Holy Spirit what you're to do, how you're to do it, where you're to do it, when you're to do it. And, you know, don't go out uh, attacking somebody uh, with being overzealous. Okay, I told you yesterday that we were going to go back and start in the beginning uh, where these principles, these uh, things that we've studied, doing the works of Jesus, uh, occupying until he comes, watching and praying. Um, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. H how do you do these things? It, it, we read over in James and in Second Peter where it says, don't get weary. Uh, well, it, it says in uh, Ephesians, don't get weary in well-doing. But in, in, the, in James and Second Peter, it says, be patient as the Lord in heaven is patient. He, he's not willing that any should perish. So how do you maintain your ministry of reconciliation? How do you maintain your assignment while you're going through all of these challenges out here in the earth. I mean, some of you have children that are, you know, gone bonkers. Uh, some of you have marriages that are not right. And uh, some of you have jobs that you don't like. And some of you go to churches that you don't get ministered to. You know, how, how do you maintain, Pastor Caldwell, while you're doing your ministry assignment? Because a lot of people want to quit all the time. They want to, you know, this 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 can't be this can't be right. I'm being attacked. I'm being uh, I have lack. I have questions, problems, sickness, disease, whatever. Well, let, let's go to to what God told Joshua. Joshua probably uh, had more of a challenge than anybody we know up at that time. He was following the ministry of Moses. And he, he'd been handpicked and chosen, but that just because you're handpicked and chosen doesn't mean it's going to be easy uh, or that you're going to succeed. And let me just say this little side note here. It just popped up. Um, I have taught leadership conferences and taught ministers and pastors. In fact, I'm, I'm getting ready to do another one this summer um, to help teach the younger ministers uh, to watch out for certain things and to encourage them. I'm told all the time that, you know, the young ministers want to know. And Well, I don't ever see them. I don't ever see any of them sitting on my doorstep. I don't ever see any of them uh, sitting in the meetings uh, where I'm preaching or other friends of mine that are preaching, they're all out doing their thing. And, uh, you know, they, they, they want to redesign the church. They want to retrofit the church. They want to make it like they want it. And so, you know, if they really are sincere and want to know, then come let them sit at the feet of the elder ministers that have been doing it for 30, 40, 50, 60 years and find out, you, you know. And I teach in, in many of these situations and I had one friend of mine, uh, we were in a conference and we were driving back and forth and we started talking and this, I could tell this brother and I love the guy, he's just precious. And he said, I was concerned about uh, the, the success. He's about my age and, you know, he said, I, I'm concerned about my successor. And I said, well, what do you tell me about it? What do you mean successor? He says, well, I'm concerned about my successor because I've always been taught that if you don't have a successor, you're a failure. 
<laughs> and I've heard that too. And I, 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 I kind of chuckled and I said, brother, I said, that is not accurate to say if you don't have a successor, you're a failure. I said, the Bible teaches that you are going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ for what you did with your assignment. Not what your successor did. Your successor may do well, may um, succeed, whatever, but that's you're not going to be judged for what they do. You're going to be judged for what God called you to do. What did God call you to do? I said, are you doing it? Oh, yes. Have you done it? Yeah, for 30, 40 years. I said, are you successful? Yes. But I thought I didn't have, I thought if I didn't have a successor, I'd be a failure. I said, no, that's not, that's not accurate. Sounds good. A lot of success motivation teachers have latched onto that. But Jesus and God is not going to judge you according to your successor. They're going to judge you according to whether you fulfilled your assignment that he gave you. And if that were true, let's, let's just take the people we're looking at here. Let's just take Moses and, and Joshua. Uh, Moses was judged and received rewards for what he did, not what Joshua did. Uh, let's go back to where we were reading uh, yesterday. Uh, God told Joshua, he said, now Moses is dead. Uh, I want you to um, take the children of Israel into the promised land. And he said, no man will stand before you. And all the days of your life as I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you. I won't forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. Now listen to these words. For under the gospel shall you divide for an inheritance. I, I mean, excuse me, I'm sorry. For under this people shall you divide for an inheritance the land which I swore to give you. Only be strong and very courageous. There's a second time he's mentioned that. That you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commended you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then shalt thou make thyself prosperous. You shall make your way prosperous. And then shall you have good success. Now he repeats himself again. Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people and, and told them what to do. But first, God dealt with him about his ministry assignment. And he gave him these things. Be strong and of good courage. Don't be dismayed. Don't be confused. Don't be sidetracked. Don't be awed. Don't uh, ex let any of these things keep you from your ministry assignment. And he, and he said, be strong and very courageous. And he said, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Now that's comforting. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. Now, we're believers. You don't have to be a gift ministry, fivefold ministry. You don't have to be apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher. You just have to be a believer. As a believer, you have an assignment. Find out what it is. You say, well, how do I do that? Ask God to show you what it is. Read his word. Pray in the spirit, and it'll come to you. Here's your assignment. Here's what I want you to do. Uh, you know, your assignment, if you're a, a woman and you're married and you've got children or grandchildren, whatever, your assignment may, might be, you might hear God say, I want you to raise your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. <laughs> That's your assignment. That's a big assignment, brother. And think of all the lives that you're going to touch and change when you teach those children the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. So you might say, oh, I want to be a great evangelist. Well, be a great evangelist, ma. Be a great evangelist, grandma. I mean, 
And many a life has been changed and saved by mamas and daddies and grandma and grandpa. Uh, be, be of good courage. And don't be dismayed. Uh, to be strong means to maintain, to be valiant. Uh, to be courageous means to prevail, prevail. Uh, he says, I will be with you as I was with Moses. Now, let me go over to Exodus 33 because it's, it's imperative that we investigate these things uh, and look at them. You can glean so much uh, by reading about uh, Moses, Joshua, how God dealt with them, etc. Uh, let's go to uh, Exodus 33, verse 11. And the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as he would speak unto a friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said to the Lord, See, you say unto me, Bring up this people, and you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you've said, I know you by your name, and I've found grace in your sight. Now, therefore, I pray you, if I have found grace in your sight, uh, show me now the way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider this nation is thy people, and consider that this nation is thy people. <laughs> I laugh at that because Moses uh, Moses said, the Lord, look at, these are your people. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything to do with it. They're yours, and you're going to be held accountable, not me. Well, that was a joke. And he said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For where, wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that you go with us? In other words, the people are going to have to see that you're with us, God. So shall we be separated, and I and the people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth, the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight. And I know you by name. And he said, I beseech you, show me your glory. Hmm. Because Moses told God, he said, God, if, if the people don't know you're with me, they won't follow me. And he said, verse 19, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you and will be gracious unto whom I'll be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. In other words, uh, God, uh, Moses was asking God for his glory. And God said, I'll show you my goodness. Because Moses thought if, his, if God's glory doesn't show up and manifest in front of the people, the people won't follow me. Now, he, now, we just read over there in Joshua where God told Joshua, he said, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. You think Moses was a great leader? He was raised a prince of Egypt. He, was, he spent 40 years on the backside of the desert. Uh, first 40 years, he was a prince of Egypt. Second 40 years, he was a shepherd on the backside of the desert. The third 40 years, 120 years, uh, he was a deliverer. And Moses lived to be 123 40-year periods. And God was with him the whole time. And, and he told Joshua, he said, as Moses, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. You don't have any reason to be afraid, competitive. You don't, you know, unfortunately, some uh, Joshua's 
uh, try to outdo their Moses and they get themselves in trouble. They get competitive and they get fearful. No, no. God says, I will be with you as I was with Moses. But be of good cheer. Don't be afraid. Be strong and of good courage. Now, if you study all of this, which I did, and man, I love to read all this stuff about Moses and Joshua and Elijah and Elisha and different ones, Paul and Timothy. Um, there, there are some characters in the Bible that didn't have a successor. Why? We don't know. But God didn't judge them according to their successor. He judged them according to what he told them to do. He'll judge you according to what he's told you to do. What, what has God given you as your ministry assignment? Every believer has a ministry assignment. And that's my whole point this week was to get you to realize you have a ministry assignment. And God's counting on you to fulfill that ministry assignment. And he's going to reward you as to whether you fulfilled and did what he called you to do. Okay. Uh, in, um, let's see, meditate my word day and night. That's what he told Joshua. Don't be dismayed. Don't be confused, fearful, or afraid. And uh, the, the Apostle Paul said over in 2 Timothy chapter uh, 4, verses 1 through 7, if we have a few minutes left, we'll go over there and read that. He said, make full proof of your ministry. Make full proof of your ministry. Now, let's go over to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Um, Proverbs chapter 4 has some good advice to a young minister. I used to read this almost uh, every day when I started in the ministry. I'm sorry, I got <laughs> I got off into Psalms. Okay. Proverbs chapter 4. I know what it says. Proverbs, I tend to my word. But Proverbs 4, verse 20. And that's what, that's what God told Joshua to do. He said, meditate in my word. Be strong and very courageous. In uh, Proverbs 4, and verse 20. My son, attend to my words. That means you're going to have to study them, read them, quote them. You're going to have to fall in love with God's words more than you do anything else. Attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Now, as you're performing your ministry, your ministry assignment, whether it's doing the works of Jesus, whether it's reconciling people unto God, whether it's watching and praying, occupying, whether it's being patient, waiting, be strong and of good courage. Maintain. You can't do any of that without meditating the word. That's why he said, meditate my word day and night. I will be with you as I was with Moses. Now, meditate the word day and night not necessarily reading something every day or every night, a chapter a day, whatever. Well, I used to, to read Proverbs of chapter a day. You can do it easy. You can read through the whole book of uh, Proverbs 12 times in a year, 30 chapters, 30 days in a month, and you can glean wisdom uh, personified by reading. But meditate. Meditate on what the Lord said. Meditate on His written word. Meditate on what he told you. What did he tell you? To make sure 
that you've got it right. Make sure that you understood him correctly. Make sure that you um, know what you're doing. Make sure that your assignment and your vision and whatever is is accurate. And I, I guess maybe I'm over, how would I say, overprotective in this area uh, because I see so many times, I see little things that are, are little flies in the ointment, things that I think if they're not careful, if they don't go back and correct that, if somebody doesn't fix that or they don't rethink that, they're going to get off. They're going to get off, and that's how Satan works. He, he just relentlessly tries to deceive people and tries to push them over the edge. Did God say that? That's what he did in the garden. Did God say this? Did God say that? God didn't mean that. God didn't say that. Before you know it, you're following your own dream. You're following your own uh, advice. <laughs> and you need to make sure you meditate that word. That means to mull it over, to, to say it over and over to yourself. Mutter it. Make sure you're following the right voice. Make sure you're doing it in the right way. And then you'll wind up over in Second Timothy. We only have about a minute here. But I want to I want to close with this. I want to make sure you see the end result of fulfilling your ministry. Uh, Second Timothy chapter four. And I want to go cut to the chase over to verse seven. Well, I'm about to run out of time. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. Therefore, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me at that day, and not only to me, but all those that love his appearing. You could say it this way. All those that have fulfilled their ministry assignment. Oh, what a day that's going to be. What a day of rejoicing. And you're going to hear... Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servant. Thanks for joining me this week, and I'll see you again on another Arkansas Live. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas, and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email Happy Caldwell at VTNTV.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on X at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.